In the 302 study, there were uh, a number of patients who were over the age of 75. Uh, and of course, prostate cancer is a disease that affects, uh, in general, uh, men as they age. Uh, and so we thought with great interest it would be important to look uh, at elderly patients, which in this case we defined as 75 years or older. And my colleague Matthew Smith published a paper demonstrating that uh, in the patients who were 75 years or older, uh, there was a retained benefit from the abiraterone and prednisone compared to the prednisone alone. And what I mean to say by that is, uh, is that um, uh, there was still a benefit over prednisone alone. Uh, just because patients were over this age of 75, they continued to live longer when they took the abiraterone plus prednisone compared to the prednisone alone. And the hazard ratio was actually 0.71 uh, for the elderly patients, whereas it was 0.81 for the patients who were, who were younger. So if anything, maybe even a slightly better outcome. Now, the elderly patients did have uh, slightly more uh, side effects that were related to edema and fluid retention, probably a manifestation that this is something that is simply more common in elderly patients. But I think the takeaway message from that paper was that it's perfectly safe to administer to elderly patients, uh, provided you are monitoring them as you would uh, anybody. With respect to steroids, of course, one of the major concerns is uh, whether uh, patients are going to develop issues around uh, diabetes, uh, cataracts uh, and or stomach ulcers and or um, weight gain. And in the Fazazi paper, a number of variables were looked at. In fact, this has been done a couple of different times. The Fazazi paper combined both of the studies with uh, abiraterone uh, and demonstrated that really the incidence of the, of, of the two most common steroid side effects, weight gain and, and hyperglycemia, is still relatively low. Uh, the hyperglycemia was around 7 or 8 percent, and weight gain, significant weight gain, was only about 3 to 5 percent. So uh, not a really significant problem in these patients. Now, when broadly defined, corticosteroid-related adverse events did occur in about 25 percent of the patients overall. The term steroids is, is a little bit complicated, honestly, and especially to a general non-medical public, people get a little bit confused. So there's a couple of points worth making. Obviously, we're talking, first of all, about a corticosteroid, and we're talking about prednisone, which is uh, essentially given at a dose of 10 milligrams, which is essentially uh, a corticosteroid replacement doses. So we are not giving superphysiologic doses of steroids like we, could, like we would for a person who's having uh, some sort of an allergic or an immune, uh, uh, excess immune problem. Um, and so we're not seeing, for example, Cushingoid, uh, patients develop, becoming Cushingoid or developing uh, some of the toxicities that are associated with high-dose steroids. So A, these are corticosteroids, not anabolic steroids, right? Uh, and, and it's important for uh, patients to understand that steroids is a very general term. Uh, and that B, uh, these steroids are really not that much uh, greater in dose than, than our body makes normally every day anyway. Um, and, uh, and C, with proper monitoring, I think that it's, a, it's something that is very controllable. And then I, I would add, finally, that in patients who do have some corticosteroid-related toxicity, it is reasonable to, to lo lower the dose of the corticosteroid from five twice a day to five a day. Uh, sometimes 7.5 a day. This was allowed in the protocol that led to the approval, and many patients did undergo a steroid dose uh, reduction. Uh, we just reported a 140-patient study in which patients took only 5 milligrams of steroids and did just fine. And so I think that it's up to the physician to, know, to, to ask the question, does the patient need the 10 milligrams? Are they benefiting from the 10 milligrams? Should I reduce the dose? Uh, and if so, they can do so with confidence as long as they continue to monitor the patient.